Yo, what's going on, Headliner Nation? It's your boy, The Doc, and it's time for another injury update show. This time we got week six, and let me tell you, week five was kind of a disaster. It may be easier, actually, for me to go through all the players that didn't end up on the IR this week. It might be a faster show, but you guys know the deal. I go through the entire NFL slate, tell you all the injuries that you need to know about for your fantasy team so that hopefully we can get through this challenging time in the NFL season by weeks injuries. Everything's trying to slow us down from winning those championships, but you guys know the deal here at Headliner Nation. We're going to keep giving you the good so that you can bring home that chip. Let's get into it. All right, normally we would start the week off with a moment of silence, but technically the only player that had his season ended was not really somebody that's going to score fantasy points, so I'll talk about him a bit later in the video. First up, we got two teams on by, Packers and Steelers, so we're not going to talk about those teams. We're going to head into Thursday night football, Broncos at the Chiefs. Chiefs getting the win. I'm recording a little bit late, so I already know what happened in that game. Broncos running back Javante Williams came back from the quad injury, didn't play last week, did suit up last night, looked okay, but still disappointing from a fantasy perspective. And then the Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey has a low ankle sprain, kind of a weird injury. His foot appeared to kind of buckle uh, during a play last week, but luckily it is a low ankle sprain, difference between a low and a high ankle sprain. Low ankle sprains, they're going to be able to tape up and support the ankle, which is what they did last night. Kelsey obviously putting up a pretty nice game. No touchdowns, but nine catches for 124 yards. You're going to take that each and every week from your tight end position. Now, let's head into the early Sunday games. First up, we got Ravens at the Titans. This is a London game, so make sure you got these guys in your lineups early on Sunday morning or Saturday night, how I like to play. I like to throw those guys in the lineups, get my lineup set Saturday night, and then make adjustments in the morning if I absolutely have to. Luckily, not a lot of adjustments that you have to make for this game. Ravens, no major injuries, so we're not going to talk much about them. Titans wide receiver Traylon Burks has a knee sprain. He didn't even travel with the team to London, indicating that he's not really that close to returning. He's already been ruled out for the week, so hopefully you've got him out of your lineups as he wasn't even playing last week. Heading over to the Commanders at the Falcons. No injuries to talk about in this game, but I did want to mention that there was a game so that we can keep everybody on track. But we're going to just skip ahead to the Vikings at the Bears. A battle of one and four teams could have major implications for how this team's season continues. Depending on who wins this game, their season could be close to over, could be riding both of these teams off pretty quickly. But Vikings taking a huge blow. Wide receiver Justin Jefferson has a hamstring strain, was perhaps the biggest injury from week five, was placed on IR, is not expected back until week 10 at the soonest. But I am worried that the team may not want him to come back if they keep losing their games. They're going to be looking for a new quarterback, most likely, if the season does not turn around quickly. And the other thing is that Justin Jefferson has not signed that big extension yet. So there is a chance that with him playing on the fifth-year option, he doesn't have as much incentive to try to rush back from an injury like this. If you have Justin Jefferson in your fantasy lineups in your te- on your team, make sure that you are paying close attention to this. I'm be honest, I'm not opposed to trading Justin Jefferson right now because you are going to be without him for at least the next four weeks, but possibly even longer. Try to get what you can, especially if your team is not winning. But that's not the only wide receiver that the Vikings are dealing with from an injury perspective. Jordan Addison also has an ankle sprain. He's practicing in a limited capacity. There is uh, an indication that maybe this injury happened in practice because there wasn't really anything on video that showed an ankle injury in the game. I expect him to play, though, so hopefully Jordan Addison can show us why they picked him in the first round this year now that J.J is out. As for the Bears, they've got running back issues galore. Khalil Herbert dealing with a high ankle sprain hasn't practiced yet this week. They were hoping that with longer rest, he'd be able to play, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Don't expect him to play. Running back Roshan Johnson dealing with a concussion, did not practice at all this week so far. Does not look like he is going to be able to suit up either. 
Third string running back Travis Homer dealing with a hamstring strain. Three running backs, zero practices this week. Dante Foreman could be a spot starter if you are desperate for running back points. But again, not the greatest matchup. Vikings defensive line is decent. That's not the only issue for the Bears, though. They've got tight end Cole Komet dealing with a hamstring strain, has been limited all week. He's hurting, but he came out, did say that he fully expects to be able to play on Sunday. I don't see any reason not to believe him. I do think Cole Komet will be able to play through. Moving on, Seahawks at the Bengals. Seahawks wide receiver DK Metcalf dealing with the rib injury. Did not practice either Wednesday or Thursday, but they're just managing his practice reps after the bye week. The injury is reportedly not serious, but I'm keeping an eye on it just to be sure heading into the weekend. He has not missed a game yet due to this, but it is a bit concerning coming off of a bye that he is still missing practices completely. Uh, Again, still expect DK Metcalf to be able to play, though. Offensive tackle Charles Cross enjoyed the bye week. He's coming off that turf toe injury, got a full practice in on Thursday. I do expect him to come back for the Seahawks. Good news for Kenneth Walker. As for the Bengals, they've got a wide receiver with a rib issue as well. T Higgins dealing with a rib fracture has been practicing in a limited capacity this week. Good chance that he's going to be able to play despite getting scratched late last week. Uh, The problem with a rib fracture really, it depends on his Uh, where he is in the healing process and really how severe the fracture is. You can have a fracture that is displaced, that is serious. You can have a fracture that's just cracked. Uh, I'm guessing based on the fact that he's practicing just a couple weeks after the injury, it's just a cracked rib. There is a chance that he will be able to suit up risky start, more of a wide receiver three for me this week. Heading over to the 49ers at the Browns, 49ers running back Elijah Mitchell dealing with a knee injury. Didn't practice Wednesday, but was able to practice in a limited capacity on Thursday. Uh, Have not seen him in a few weeks in practice, so good to see he is practicing again. I still say given his history, long shot for him to play on Sunday. Expect a lot of Christian McCaffrey once again. And then the Browns got all sorts of issues going on. First up, quarterback Deshaun Watson dealing with now what they're calling a rotator cuff contusion or bruise was already been ruled out though. So no Deshaun Watson this week. I'm starting to think maybe the team is downplaying this injury a bit because early rule outs aren't always an indicator of how bad an injury is, but it is no, it's very confusing from a uh, strategy perspective to already rule him out this early in the week. There's no reason for them to say he won't be playing unless they are certain that he is not ready. So I'm worried about Deshaun Watson if I have him as my starting quarterback. They are going to plan on playing P.J. Walker. I would personally prefer they let Dorian Thompson Robinson get another crack at it now that he's gotten those first game jitters out. But the team's opting for P.J. Walker instead, somebody who has a little bit more starting experience in the NFL. Tight end David Njoku is dealing with burn injuries. He burnt his hand and face pretty bad at a backyard barbecue a few weeks back. He managed to play with the injuries, but he did not look great. He shared a photo of his face. Very concerned with the level of these burns. I can't believe he played a couple weeks ago. Looks like he is going to be able to play through it again, but again, concerning for David Njoku. And then defensive end Miles Garrett dealing with a foot sprain. Didn't practice Wednesday, limited on Thursday. Was seen in a walking boot last week, but he remains confident that he is going to be able to play with the foot injury. He is a freak of nature. I'm expecting him to play through it, but just know that he is banged up. Moving on to the Saints at the Texans. Saints tight end Juwan Johnson dealing with a calf strain. Has not practiced at all this week. Doesn't look like he is over this injury yet. Don't plan on him playing. And then Texans wide receiver Tank Dell dealing with a concussion. Hasn't practiced yet this week. Looks like a bona fide stud despite the fact that he is absolutely tiny. Really changing the last few years on what a great wide receiver in the NFL can look like from a size perspective. But no practices this week. He's already been ruled out. We're not going to see Tank Dell, but keep him in mind if you're looking at the waiver wire for somebody that could be maybe dropped that you could pick up or scoop up for free. Heading over to the Colts at the Jags. Colts quarterback Anthony Richardson has a severe AC sprain. He has been placed on IR, was tackled hard as a runner, and got his AC joint smashed into the ground. A grade three injury is as severe as it gets 
when it comes to a sprain like this, and he could eventually need surgery. They're going to try to rehab this injury first. Don't be surprised if A. Rich misses the next two months with an injury like this. The earliest that we can see him back is week 10. As for the Jags, wide receiver Zay Jones dealing with a knee sprain has not practiced yet. You may remember that he returned last week after missing weeks three and four with a knee injury. He re-aggravated that injury. I don't expect him to play this week. And then the last game of the early slate, we got Panthers at the Dolphins. Panthers running back Miles Sanders dealing with a shoulder sprain has not practiced yet this week. He was dealing with the groin injury prior to this. Now we're adding a shoulder issue on top of that. It's looking like a Chuba Hubbard week with Sanders not practicing at all. Highly unlikely that we see him playing. And then we've got linebacker Brian Burns dealing with an ankle sprain. Didn't practice on Thursday. Defensive tackle Derek Brown also didn't practice on Thursday. It would really be a shame if Carolina's two best defensive players were we're both unable to play against arguably the best offense in the NFL right now. Miami is currently favored by over two touchdowns, but it might as well be five or six because this Panthers team is just not very good. As for the Dolphins, they didn't escape the major injury bug that a lot of these teams have been dealing with. Running back Devon A-Chain, the stud rookie running back, just coming on, starting to take over that starting position, has an MCL injury. He has been placed on IR with this injury. Disappointing that we're not going to be able to see him. Normally, I would say this is big news for Raheem Mostert, who started out the year white hot, except that Jeff Wilson is expected to come back off the IR this week and likely is going to work in immediately with Raheem Mostert. I've got Mostert as kind of a low-end RB1, RB2 right now, and Wilson's kind of a deeper flex option. I do think he's going to get some run in his first week back for the NFL season. All right, heading into the midday slate. First up, we got Lions at the Buccaneers. Lions, all sorts of injuries on the offensive side of the ball. Running back Jameer Gibbs, dealing with a hamstring strain, has not practiced at all this week. Doesn't appear to be over this hamstring issue yet. Don't expect him to play another big day for David Montgomery possibly coming. Tight end Sam Laporta showing up on the injury report with a calf strain was not listed Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday. Very surprising downgrade for Sam Laporta. I am worried because the injury report today, Friday, is going to tell the story. If he does not practice again, I'm looking for a replacement for Sunday for Sam Laporta. And then wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown dealing with the abdominal injury that kept him out last week. Surprising scratch last week, but he is practicing in full as of Thursday. I would expect him to return this week and be relatively healthy heading into this game. As for the Buccaneers, wide receiver Mike Evans coming off the hand hamstring strain and the bye week definitely helped him didn't practice Wednesday limited on Thursday but with this coming off of this injury with a hamstring issue we're always concerned about a guy like Mike Evans who's got a little bit of a history with the hammy he's a game time decision but trending towards playing based on his practice reports thus far Moving on to the Cardinals at the Rams. Cardinals running back James Conner also got put on IR with a knee injury. Uh, I couldn't find a lot of info, honestly, about this knee injury. Couldn't even really find a video of where it possibly happened. And so I don't expect him uh, to miss the rest of the season, but I do think that he is going to miss at least until week 10, possibly even longer. And then as for the Rams, no major injuries for them. So we're going to head over to the Eagles at the Jets, Eagles, all sorts of injuries in the secondary and on the defense. Cornerback Darius Slay, uh, Justin Evans, the safety, and then Sidney Brown, the safety, all showing up on the injury report. And then defensive tackle Jalen Carter has an ankle injury that showed up on Thursday, not listed Wednesday, DNP on Thursday. That secondary, though, banged up. Both Slay and Evans have not practiced yet this week. Don't expect them to play. Sidney Brown is practicing in a limited capacity. Looks like he'll be able to come back this week. But really, that mystery is all about Jalen Carter's ankle injury. A downgrade to a DNP has me worried that he could miss this week. 
because of an injury that happened in practice, something we might not get a whole lot of details about before Sunday. So just keep an eye on it if you're in an IDP league or if you're planning on starting a Jets running back that know that the Eagles could be a little bit weak in the middle of the defense. As for the Jets, they technically had the season ending injury that I mentioned at the beginning, but it's to an offensive line, lineman, 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 uh, Elijah Vera Tucker dealing with an Achilles tear. When it rains, it really pours for the Jets. They lost their starting guard to the same injury that cost them their quarterback in week one. Disastrous first five games for the Jets. Let's head into Sunday night football, and we're going to talk about probably the most injured team in the NFL this week. That's the Giants taking on the Bills. Giants have 17 players listed on their injury report including their quarterback daniel jones dealing with a neck injury didn't practice at all this week so far does not look like he's going to be able to play tyrod taylor is going to get the start in his place running back saquon barkley has been practicing in a limited capacity coming off the ankle injury that's cost him a few weeks already the practicing is encouraging but i'm seeing some videos come out from those practices his ankle is still heavily taped he does not look very excited explosive, at least not what we would expect from Saquon Barkley. I'd say we're still a week or two away on him returning. Again, not a lot of uh, encouragement coming from those practice videos. So even if he plays, we're looking at more of an RB2 than an RB1 with Saquon Barkley. And the tight end, Darren Waller, also injured. He has a groin strain, didn't practice on Wednesday, limited on Thursday. Huge disappointment thus far, and now he's showing up on the injury report, something we have seen way too often over the last three years with Darren Waller and his career. Just really a tough time staying healthy for this guy. He's going to be a game-time decision, but I'm already looking for other options knowing his history. And then if you can't talk about the Giants without talking about the fact that they have three alignment that have not practiced yet this week, center John Michael Schmitz, Andrew Thomas, the tackle, and then Andrew Hart also dealing with a shoulder injury. None of those guys are practicing, so banged up all over the place for the Giants. As for the Bills, they're relatively healthy outside of tight end Dalton Kincaid dealing with a concussion. He's been limited in practice the last two days. Looks like he's on track to return in just one week after a concussion, something that we have rarely seen this season. So don't be surprised if he's a late scratch. If you've got him, you plan on starting him, have a backup in place for Sunday. Uh, hopefully we'll get some news on him before the game uh, late at Sunday night. Now, last game of the week, we got Monday night football Cowboys at the Chargers. Cowboys running back Tony Pollard dealing with a shoulder sprain. Got a limited practice in on Thursday. I don't really expect him to miss time with this injury, but I just figured I'd let everybody know he is technically limited, even though it's just a walkthrough uh, projection for practices this week. Just know Tony Pollard dealing with a shoulder issue. Wide receiver Kevontae Turpin has an ankle sprain. He's expected to miss multiple uh, weeks with this ankle injury. He's been providing some splash plays for the offense, so I'd like to see what they look like without his speed running down the field, but he wasn't a great, reliable fantasy option. And then linebacker Leighton Vander Esch for the Cowboys has a neck injury as well as a concussion. He was placed on IR. Leighton Vander Esch has a history of neck injuries, and then just this just adds another one to that injury history. He's been able to return multiple times from these neck injuries, but it's really a shame to see such a talented guy continue to deal with the same type of injury and an injury as serious as a neck issue coming up again and again and again. It's very disheartening for Leighton Vander Esch and the Cowboys because they just can't trust that this guy's going to be healthy year in and year out. And for the Chargers, finally, I'm going to give you guys some good news. Chargers running back Austin Eckler coming back from the ankle sprain, got a full practice in on Thursday. Now, it was just a walkthrough, but it was considered a full practice. He would have been a full go. Finally, he returns. Good news for anybody that has been waiting for Austin Eckler to come back. It's good to see him practicing at least somewhat in a full capacity, and I think he's ready to come back healthy and provide those RB1 numbers again. Expect him to play, barring a setback later in the weekend if it happens, but still, Good to see a stud return to the field when we lost so many good players 
this week to the IR. Good to see a guy like Austin Eckler coming back and bolstering those fantasy lineups. That's it for the week six injury update show. Let me know if there's anybody I missed in the comments down below. And I just want to take a minute to just thank each and every one of you guys. I don't know if you noticed, but we hit a major milestone this week at the channel. 200,000 subscribers for the YouTube channel. Unbelievable. I can't believe when I got brought on to this channel, we weren't even at 100 yet, and we're already at 200,000. Headliner Nation continues to grow, and that's because of the support of each and every one of you. So thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, you guys let me talk about injuries each and every week and have fun doing it here on this channel, and I appreciate you. But if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the button because we're not done just at 200,000. We want to hit 300, 400, maybe even a million someday we know that the people are out there but thank you to everyone that's already subscribed make sure you like this video join headliner nation's exclusive discord channel hit the join button and get access to us 24 7 365 I want to thank our sponsors manscaped use the code headliners get 20 percent off and free shipping on your first purchase thanks to our friends over at pristine auction i'm sure that jake has got something good cooked up for the live show tomorrow to just celebrate this huge accomplishment for the channel and i'm sure pristine auction is going to be involved in that so make sure you use the code headliners when you sign up over at pristine auction and of course we thank our friends over at underdog fantasy use the code headliners get a hundred dollar first deposit match over at underdog fantasy where we are making all sorts of money with our friends at underdog but that's all i got for you guys this week appreciate you guys once again and i will see you next week the doc is out I'm a